Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the 90210 show. My name is Mark. With me, as always, is my lovely girlfriend, Carol. How are you today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It is April 26th, 1996. And we, what? What's your face? You're right. I'm just amazed. That's all. (laughs) I'm on top of things. Carol got me a calendar. I did. With the stars of Baywatch. (laughs) Yeah. Yasmin Bleeth. I've never seen the show once. That's the kind of girlfriend I am. Never seen the show once in my life, but... Hey, hot chicks in bathing suits. Right, I know. I'm not complaining about the calendar, I'm just saying. Well, I mean, there is a... Oh, what's that dude's name that's on it? David Hasselhoff? Yeah, there is him. Don't hassle the (laughs) Hoff. Right. He's a big singer in Germany. I do not find him attractive. No, he's not an attractive guy. <laughs> but I mean, like, people act like he is. He's running around in a bathing suit in a show. I mean, like. Well, he created the show. <laughs> like, oh, that well, makes so much you sense. You didn't realize that. Yeah. No. He created the Like, he's the uh-huh. creator of the show. It's his whole brainchild. He's like a millionaire now based on, on this show alone. That's so funny. He was more attractive when he was on Knight Rider in the 80s. He's not as attractive now that he's older, but. When it was do 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 I can't do the theme song, but you know, with the with the lights mm-hmm. on Kit. Who was the voice of Kit is William Daniels, who was the surgeon on the heart surgeon, thoracic surgeon or whatever, on Saint Elsewhere. Oh, your favorite. We should do an episode of Saint Elsewhere someday. Bum, 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 bum. Show's canceled. Oh, well, I guess we missed that window. They do reruns. <laughs> well, we could do a rerun. But yeah, the show's not on the air anymore. You, you know what my favorite thing about Baywatch is, though? Uh, no, I don't. Just that Joey and Chandler and friends like it. Oh, okay, yeah, they watch it. There's this one scene where they're Baywatch. talking about the show and. And they're like, always keep them running. That is the brilliance of the show. Yeah. It's a, well, it's an international phenomenon, right? <laughs> I guess. People love this Baywatch. It's so stupid. Yeah, I'm not into it. Mm-mm. What do you think about uh, the biosphere in Arizona? What, what, what? The movie we watched today talked about the biosphere in Arizona. Do you think that they watch Baywatch in the biosphere? Biosphere Baywatch. Sure. A Biosphere Bay Watch Day. Everybody else does. Why not? They're like living in seclusion or something like that. I think to prepare for a mission to Mars. Hmm. I don't know. What would it Why be Why like? would you want to torture yourself in preparation for torturing yourself? Well, some people find it exciting to visit. The, could you? To, okay. So first of all, I would never do it. All right. Right. But. Can't you imagine how exciting it would be to be the first person on to set foot on another planet, mm-hmm. on a planet separate from Earth? Yeah, exciting, like, in that cold uh, fear slicing through my body all the way into the pit of my stomach way, sure. But they, they, apparently astronauts don't feel that way. Yeah, well, they're weird. And your name would be in the history books forever. I don't care. Forever. <laughs> I don't know. I think astronauts are just adrenaline junkies. Do you? Who also have to eat brainiacs. Because they have to be really smart. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you would think so, yeah. (laughs) Generally, they have to be smart, too. They're rocket scientists or whatever. I guess some of them are pilots. Right. I think you have to be really smart, too, anyway. You have to have good vision and you can't be colorblind, so I'm out. Well, you have to not be terrified of the black abyss of space, so I'm out. Oh, you know. Everybody's got to face their black abyss sometimes. <laughs> nope. My fear is so much easier to avoid than yours. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> I mean, they both involve going up into the sky. It's just how far. Wow. Quite poignant. 
<laughs> so this is the 90210 show, right? Uh, yeah, it is. No, it's it's a, it's phobia central. <laughs> so where we talk about our fears. Oh. Mm-hmm. How about spiders? <gasps> I killed a spider today. Did you really? I did. Where was it? Under my desk. Oh my goodness. It was giant. I yeah. screamed. I ran. It ran, but I won. <laughs> the fuck? It did. <laughs> That's like the worst retelling of the tortoise and the hare. <laughs> I screamed. It screamed. It ran. I ran, but I won. <laughs> well, I did. I got to peel it off the bottom of a shoe and flush oh it down the toilet. God. <laughs> How big was it? Oh, for for those of you who can't see us. Which is oh. everyone. <laughs> Sorry. She held up her hand <laughs> around the circumference of my penis. Oh, no. No, no, not, not quite that big. No, I, I was saying probably about like... A quarter? Quarter to half dollar size. That's big. Yeah. Is that including the legs? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, See, for usually sure. when I talk about the size of a spider, I, I talk about the body itself. Well, the body was diamond shaped, and the fact that I can tell you that tells you how big the fucking oh, spider yeah. was. Diamond shaped? Yeah. Sounds like a brown recluse. Oh, God. That's frightening. Yeah, those Ooh. are, those are uh, venomous. I don't think we have those here. We do. Holy shit, I almost died today. We have uh, Brown Recluse and Black Widow. Those are the two venomous spiders that exist in Michigan. I mean, I know they exist in Michigan, but I don't think we have them here. Oh, you mean in in this house that you... Like, I think they only exist in, like, the woods and, like, up north and stuff. That's true. They're, it's like uh, it's like rabbits. You never see rabbits around here. They only exist in the woods. <laughs> Anything that's in the woods, they're like... A, a, black, or a brown recluse spider will get to the edge of the woods and be like, no, wait, I can't, can't leave the woods. <laughs> no up. one will expect me to be out here. <laughs> okay, fine. You hear so... the spider's mom, spider, come on back. You're going too far. <laughs> you can only ride your bike to the end of the woods. Oh, my God. I'm so frightened. Actually, I have no idea what... What the brown clues body shape is. You're an asshole. We're going to the library and getting a spider book with pictures and finding whatever the fuck I saw, but I'm not looking because I'll vomit. Okay. Okay. This has been spider talk. <laughs> there was a spider on 90210. Was there? No. Yeah, I didn't think um, so. They, they but should, David they would should, be there to kill it. They should find spiders. On Why? shows. Um, they should deal with spiders on shows sometimes. But do they even have spiders in L.A.? Oh, that's a good question. Yes. Okay. I assume they do. I don't know. <laughs> I know they have cockroaches. Do they? Because they have cockroaches everywhere. Yeah, Steve lives there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. All right. So this is the episode where... Donna and Kelly and David are all moving in together. Yeah, that's right. They got their $2 million view apartment. Right. And Donna's mom, like, won't leave them alone. She's leaving for Houston the next day. And she insists on coming in and wanting to use the bathroom, but unfortunately... Wow, you're just skipping right to the end of the episode. (laughs) I am? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. What else happened? No, go ahead. Go ahead. With them. What else happened with them? What else? What's that? Yeah, exactly. that's exactly it. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. What else happens with that storyline? Yeah. They move into the apartment, so David's, quote, helping them move in. That's the lie that Donna tells her mother. Right. And Kelly says to her, you need to tell your mom the truth. And she's like, no, no, because then she'll make me move out, and this is the best way. And Kelly's like, what if she calls? And Donna's like, well, we'll just get a separate line. Yeah, that's pretty stupid. That That's going a little far. And if you notice, their answering machine only has Kelly and Donna on yeah. it. Yeah. What if, what if David's looking for a job and the employer's calling and they're like, oh, this isn't David's machine. I'm not going to leave them a message. Right. Yeah. It's I'm not going to leave those two airheads a message. It is no bueno. Okay. But her mom does stop by. Yeah. 
And David... I didn't say that didn't happen. ...hides in the fucking bathroom, right. and then she wants to use the bathroom. Yeah. Like... She's like, I just gotta, uh... I gotta pee, you know. It, I don't know. I mean, like... I'm gonna walk into the shower and pee. <laughs> well, that's the thing. He was in the shower, so, I mean, I don't think he would have gotten caught, but he Still, would have been traumatized. Yeah, I mean, that's his girlfriend's mom. Yeah. It's just to hear her pee, you know? But, I mean, like... Some guys like that, though. Some guys got, you know, have a pension for that, right? Ew. What's the difference between a lentil and a chickpea? What? I've never paid money to have a lentil on my chest. Oh, God. You're disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Come on, that's a funny joke. Ew. All right. Ew. Ew. Just, just... Ew. Ew. That's correct. All right. Um, Brenda. (laughs) Right back to Brenda, all right. Why? Why not? I know nothing really happens with these guys. They're lying. And they get away with it. But it's going to come up. Also, her mom's like, I'm a, we're going to be back every weekend. <laughs> yeah. She said, soon we'll be back for weekends. Like, what, what's David going to do? I mean, granted, like, they're dating, so he should probably just be there all the time anyway. Even if he lived in the dorms, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he really be at his girlfriend's apartment instead? I mean, most of the time, you would think so. She even says to him, she's like, you know, I'm glad that you're going to be living close just in case they need a man around the house. Yeah. I think... And then she tips him a wink and hands him some condoms. <laughs> I think that her mom wouldn't mind as much as Donna thinks she would. Yeah, I agree. I think her mom is going to mind that Donna is lying to her more yeah. than anything else. Which I I would, like, never do that. You would never lie to Donna's mom? To my mom about something that big. I mean... It makes, like, that's going to hurt their whole relationship. Yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll move in together soon. Maybe. What do you think about that? Why are you asking me on tape, you dick? (laughs) I'm not asking you. I said maybe. I said maybe that'll happen one day. Maybe. Anyway. uh, So, after she leaves, Donna's like, I gotta go to bed, you know, and everything. And David sidles into her bedroom. Mm-hmm. She goes to lay down in the bed, and she's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm going to sleep. And she goes, not near you're not. Yeah, and he's like, come on, Donna. You you promised me sex on prom, and then you've been putting me off all summer. Yeah. And now we live under the same roof. And she's like, uh-huh. You're still sleeping in your bed. What did she... She said something. I don't something remember. Something like that, yeah. And, and, like, I think she's being really unfair. I agree. Even though you... You said, you you recited that as if he was like a child whining. (laughs) But in in some ways it's the same, right? Because he's whining for the breast. Oh, (laughs) God. Just like a child would. Um, But it's funny because you're kind of on his side. I'm on both their sides. Like, I think him doing that to start out their living together Mm -hmm. was kind of a dick move. Yeah. But, a literal dick move. Right. But, I mean, he's been waiting so long, she should just sleep with him. <laughs> Who gives a fuck about your beliefs, Tata? Just fuck him. Well, I mean, we we know that later this season he's going to cheat on her. Yeah. But she does not time. know that yet. And it's not the first time. And it's not the first time. But maybe if she were sleeping with him, he wouldn't cheat on her. I would almost guarantee it so i think that it's a mistake because i really like him and i think their relationship is good i yeah i mean we have different attitudes about this though you what know? do you mean we weren't we don't wait for marriage and and we just have a different outlook on this oh then than her yes i thought you meant than each other no i mean i wouldn't think so I used to think I was going to wait for marriage, though, when I was, like, you know, a kid. Yeah, and then you saw the outline of my dick print <laughs> in my tight jeans, and you were like, mm, I'm not going to wait. Well, no, like, literally, as soon as uh, as soon as soon the hormones, like, kicked in, I was just like, no. Right. Yeah, I, I get it. I understand. How about you? Did you ever think you were going to wait? No. No? No. Did you I get... thought I was going to wait as long as I had to. <laughs> Did you get taught that you should? Uh, well, I mean, I, I went to catechism 
and I went to church Catholic you uh-huh. know, when I was growing up. And they may have, like, at some point said, you know, you're supposed to wait till marriage or something like that. I don't know. It's really hard for me to remember. It wasn't emphasized. And my parents just certainly didn't emphasize it. So I would say no. It's it's highly emphasized right now. Like, in, in church, you see girls walking around with True Love Waits Bibles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like it's like a whole, like, movement thing right now. Well, it's because they don't want girls to get pregnant, and they think the way to stop teenagers from getting pregnant is to stop them from having sex. Which I agree, that would have that effect. Right. But I don't think that's going to happen. Agreed. I think that protection is the best, especially with AIDS and everything. I think protection is the best thing to teach. Yeah. So... Donna is uh, rejecting him, and he's going to cheat on her eventually. Yeah, so that's good. So Brenda yeah. is still miserable in uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. And There's she... Murders all around her. <laughs> right. <laughs> the <laughs> rape newsletter. She, um, I don't know, like, she's kind of sinking into a depression, it seems like. Like, she doesn't ever want to do anything. Well, she's homesick. Yeah, but I she's mean... She's listening to... She's listening to uh, Alan Sherman records and stuff like that. What's that? What's that mean? Hello, Mada. Hello, Fada. Oh. <laughs> Here I am at Camp Granada. You know that, that, that one? Yeah. Well, like, somebody, who did it? Was it Andrea drew her that picture that she has up? I don't know. Somebody. One of them people that, you know, she used to be friends with uh, drew her a big map of, like, L.A. And it says in the middle, like, we miss you, Brenda, and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's really cute. So she just sits there and stares at it all the time. Yeah. And her her roommates, like, got a new boyfriend. Mm. This is not good for their relationship. Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> His name is Dylan. It's not Dylan McKay. No. And her roommate's like, hey, you know, if I get lucky, I'm going to hang this thing on the door. It's so a red tassel, right? Isn't yeah. That what it yeah. Is? And uh, she's like, so, you know, you might need to find somewhere else to be tonight. Mm-hmm. And instead of finding somewhere else to be tonight, Brenda just sleeps in the hall. Yeah, that's dumb. Like, Go to a friend. I mean, what I, the fuck? obviously she doesn't have any other friends. No one that she thinks that she can go to their dorm room anyway, but find someplace else. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... She talked to the other girls. Like, yeah. I, she's not putting any effort into trying to make friends or make a life there or make it no. nice for herself. Maybe she just wanted to, like, lean with her back against the the wall and put her ear up there and hear someone moan Dylan's Ew. name. Oh, Dylan. That's so gross. <laughs> Speaking of Dylan, yeah, Dylan uh, comes back from Europe. Okay, we're switching from Brenda to Dylan now. Yeah. All right. No, I no, guess go, not. Go ahead. I'm 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 just on this ride with you, <laughs> Carol. That's all that's happening. This is your show. I'm just living in it. Dylan came back from Europe, mm-hmm. and he goes and visits uh, Steve and Brandon at the beach house that they're staying at. Yes. Which is really weird to me. Okay. Because he has not been home yet. Mm-hmm. He just got off a plane and went there. How do you know where to go? I don't know. Like, I guess he probably called Brandon's house, maybe? I guess. It seems weird. He knew to call Brenda last week or whatever at her at her dorm. Yeah. So I'm guessing that he's been in contact with them. He got the number from probably Cindy to the dorm room. Right. And I'm guessing he also got that information. Well, they're at a beach house. Oh, I, guess, I want to go visit them. What's the address? I guess their parents are like 411 for uh, their friends. There you go. That's what it is. Trying to find our children. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of their parents. Yeah. They're uh, they're enjoying their time alone. Yeah, they fucked on Brenda's bed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If I had kids, I don't know if I could do that. No way. Have sex on their bed? Gross. Like her stuffed animal was still on there. It had to cover its eyes. Oh, I'm sure they moved it. I'm sure, they yeah they moved a lot. I'm sure. <laughs> I would hope they moved it. Jim sure moved it. <laughs> but Dylan, so Cindy, move it on back. Dylan shows up there and um, 
He won't stay the night because he wants to go back and, and settle in and deal with the mail and all the bullshit. To his house, yeah. Right. Um, I don't remember if there was much going with him there. With him where? At the beach house. Mm, not really. But when he goes home, Kelly shows up. Yep. What? <laughs> go ahead. Never mind. I won't it's like talk you're about sick. it. No, talk about it. It's just it's weird how like you're just drawing it out, like setting it up. But when he goes home, <laughs> Kelly shows up. What this is is a lack of caffeine. Okay. Yep. <sighs> the neurons aren't synapsing in <laughs> your brain not. very fast, huh? No. Okay. So Kelly, Plus, we didn't see this. We saw this two days ago. Shh. That's another problem. That's the problem. I swear to God, one of these days we will record right after we watch it. We should. That's what we should do. Instead of like watching like freaking, you know, MTV, we should uh, be watching recording our. Tapes. We should be watching. You want us to have an out of body experience <laughs> where both of us leave our bodies, yes. float above it, and watch ourselves record the show. Okay. We'll go to the, the New Age store and pick yeah. up some stuff. Oh. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, Kelly tells Donna. Donna? <laughs> oh, Donna. That's that's Donna after she gets breast enlargement surgery. Becomes a double D. <laughs> Hello, Donna. She tells her what happened in Paris. Oh, she tells, yeah, yeah. Kelly tells Donna, right? Which I think that's is... That's part of the... That's part of their storyline that you skipped through. Yeah, but I was thinking it's kind of important we should talk about it because, you know. Yeah, it's pretty vital to the show. <laughs> yeah. Correct. You know what, though? Remember how you were like, oh, this is only her side, and I'm sure his side's different. They never show his side, so that kind of no. leads me to believe her side's accurate. Yeah, I agree. So, okay. She gets upset because he is ignoring her. We're flashing back to Europe, just so you know. Yeah, we're, 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 in, we're in France. Yeah. So she's upset because he's ignoring her and doesn't want to do anything. Yeah, he's pissed off. He got news that he didn't get into Berkeley because apparently just uh, coasting for three and a half years and then in the last two months of your high school uh, career, actually trying a little bit and taking one class, uh, one English class, and then doing well on one test doesn't guarantee you an, an admission into a really good school. Right. So he's upset that he didn't get into Berkeley, and he's moping. He should have given them more money. <laughs> right. But yeah, so he's he's upset, and she then walks in and finds him talking to some other girl. Yeah, now he's all happy. And he, yeah, he's well, laughing she, okay. and smiling. What? You're skipping over vital information. Okay, you tell it. I don't want to tell it. I want you to tell it. I want to make snarky comments. <laughs> I, just want, I just want an accurate depiction of what happened he's all mopey and shit she's like we should go back to paris and he says i don't want to go to paris i want to read this book and drink this coffee and mope he doesn't say that but yeah that's basically what he's saying and she and he goes you want to go back you want to go to paris you go to paris so she goes she leaves for a couple days to go to paris oh yeah and when she comes back she goes back to the cafe where she knows he's going to be. He's reading his book, and he's talking in a very flirtatious, happy way mm-hmm. with this Babette or something like that. Some, some fucking French name. Who knows? Menage. That was her name. Right. It's a fucking French name. So it was <laughs> Menage. Yeah. So Kelly is, you know, concerned and irritated mm-hmm. and comes up to them. And they're talking in French, which she does not speak French. Correct. Which is very rude. Correct. And you can kind of make out that they said princess. Yeah, well, Babette did, yeah. And Dylan laughed. Yep. So she's like, are you guys laughing at me? You know, like, I mean, that's He's like, it's just awful. a joke, Kelly. And she goes, oh, you're all happy now that I'm not around. You're talking to this whore. Yeah, and, and she's like, why don't you tell me what you said? And he's like, it loses something in the translation. Fuck yeah, off. He's, be, he's being a real dick. Yeah. So she had been flirting with some bartender. Nope, nope, no. You're going to skip over something again. All right. What am I skipping this time? So 
he comes up and he's like, Kelly, don't leave, you know, or whatever. And she says something like, oh, you probably slept with her or whatever, which he does not deny, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. He does not deny that in that in this moment. Um, And she says, what does she say? She says, uh, you know, it's so much easier for you to be happy with me not around and everything. And he says to her, yeah. With with you gone and not like on my case all the time or whatever, uh, yeah, it was a lot easier to be happy. Yeah, they were really mean to each oh, other. It was terrible. Yeah. So he, now get get on to the bartender. Okay, so she was flirting with this bartender. You must have really liked the way this bartender looked because you you couldn't wait to get to this part of the story. Well, no, it just it it kind of stands out. This is a major thing. Mm-hmm. So she gets him to take her for a drive in the countryside. He's been bugging her to do this. Yeah. Okay, fine. So he gets her to do it. Whatever. No, she finally agrees. So she goes off with him. Dylan sees her go off with him. I right? think so. I don't know. Actually, I don't think so. But. Oh. So she, he drives her around for a couple hours, and then she just has him take her back to the hotel. That's what she uh, tells Donna. Mm-hmm. And then she goes back to Dylan, mm-hmm. and she tells him that she was with this guy. Yeah. Well, she says... I, she says he drove me because he's like, what would you, you, where were you? What were you doing? And she's like, what do you care? What's your business? And he's like, well, were you with that bartender? And she's like, yeah, he drove me around uh, the French countryside. And then we went back to his place and I had a really good time. Yeah. She didn't even say it like that. She's like, and I had a great time. Yeah. Like, like definitely trying to imply they had sex. Yes. So, yeah. And then she, what, which one of them leaves? She does. Yeah. That's why she left early. So, but then he says that he slept with Babette or whatever, too. No, he didn't. He never says it? No. Oh, I thought he did. No. Okay. So, yeah, so she leaves and goes home, and now he has come home, and they haven't spoken, and she shows up on his doorstep. And she, he sa- she says, were you ever going to call me? And he says, were you ever going to give me your phone number? And she goes, I guess we're even. And he goes, on all counts. Yeah, so, like, he slept with that lady because he thinks she slept with the bartender. I, I think that's what happened. I don't think he slept with her beforehand. Mm-hmm. I think he slept with her afterwards. Right. And, Revenge sex. And that's what he's saying. But then she says to him, they have a bit more of a conversation. They hug and everything. And she says to him, you know, I didn't sleep with that bartender. Just so you know, she goes, I know you're probably not going to believe me, but I didn't sleep with that bartender and I'm sorry and everything. You know, she apologizes. And he says, oh, I didn't sleep with Pat either. Which, yeah, it's even more like a lie. I think he's lying. Yeah. And I think that's going to come out eventually. But they they make up. She apologizes to him, which I think is kind of ridiculous. I mean, I do think she shouldn't have implied that she had sex with that bartender. Yeah. But. Like, the whole thing was his fault. Yeah. Like he started it. He yeah. was totally... Here's the thing. Here's the classic mistake that she made. And uh, women in relationships, guys too in relationships, avoid this classic mistake. There's a misunderstanding, right? Mm. In this instance, you know, we know the misunderstanding. Dylan is 100% wrong. When she comes back from Paris, he's talking to that girl... Dylan is 100% wrong, and she is 100% right. But because she's so angry, mm-hmm. and she wants to get back at him, she does something wrong, too, and now she's a bit at fault, too. Right. Don't fall into that trap. Stay 100% right. <laughs> I think that's a pretty hard thing to accomplish when you're that angry and hurt. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess. When but... people are hurt, they want to lash out and hurt others, and that's what happened But here. you can do that without being wrong Mm, i don't think so i think so i i know you do but (laughs) (laughs) do you want me to demonstrate (laughs) no i mean i'm just saying like i I think she could have yelled at him she could have berated him they could have i mean like he very much deserved a tongue lashing and not the kind of tonguing that babette gave him (laughs) and he she could have hurt him that way she could have hurt him verbally, deservedly, and not been in the wrong. Mm. You have to be, you know, she couldn't, you can't personally attack. She couldn't 
you know, go below the belt, but there, there's things you can say. Yeah, but I mean, you got to be careful. It, it's, I mean, that's not easy to not go over the line and yeah. say something that makes you wrong then, too. Yeah, okay. I, I see your point on that. So, it looks like they're getting back together. Yep. Which is really irritating because I, I think together. they should have stayed apart. Like, I think that breakup should have been it for them. Well, pretty soon they will be apart, so. Oh, and he had called, you know, Brenda, like, last episode, right? So, like, the only reason that he's even talking to Kelly is because Brenda's not there. Right. And Brenda didn't answer the phone. Correct. So, whatever. You know, it's weird. At the very end of the episode, they come back, like, they, they, they all have a party, like a housewarming party at Donna and Kelly's house. Everyone mm-hmm. comes in. And they go and sit down and stuff, and Dylan and Kelly are there, and they're all making out and shit. And Donna looks upset, and Andrea's like, what's what's wrong? And she's like, you see Dylan and Kelly, they're all over each other. Brenda's not going to be happy about it. And she's like, well, Brenda's not here. And she goes, yeah, you know, I guess you're right. But it's like, that makes no sense. Why? Like, that supposes that Brenda knows they had trouble in Europe. And that maybe they even broke up for a little bit in Europe, which Brenda can't know because one, she's not in Beverly Hills Two, Donna is the only person that Kelly told and swore her to secrecy, not even to tell David. So how would Brenda know? Why would she be upset if she came back and they were and Kelly and Dylan were, you know, on each other or whatever? How would that be any different than when she left? I don't think it would be different. I just think that even before she left, it would have been upsetting for her. I, that it doesn't sound like, that that does it doesn't make sense the way Donna says it doesn't make sense. I, I guess it only makes and, sense if you know everything that's happening plot wise. Yeah, well, and you know, Brenda uh, could know because Donna could have a giant mouth. Yeah, well, David will never know, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, that's now. I'll forgive it if we find out later that Donna's been talking on the phone to Brenda. Yeah. But I which, don't think that's the case. Which would actually make more sense about how Brenda acts. But um, when Brenda is in her dorm room and, you know, sulking and not going to the parties that she's being invited to, mm-hmm. they are deciding that she's a stuck-up bitch. And she finds this out because they say, they so. say it. They think she's asleep mm-hmm. and they're in the room looking for something. Have you ever met a more stuck-up bitch in your life, they say? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. I, wait, even if they want to talk shit about her, just wait. Yeah. Why? Like, even if you think she's sound asleep, even if you drugged her, wh- why? Why would you say anything? Just yeah. wait till you're out of the room. What the fuck? They're so eager to fucking talk about what a piece of shit they think she is that they got to say it. So she has had enough at that point. Yeah, and she's done. She packs up her shit and tells them that she is out, and she basically she lets them know that she heard them. Yeah, well, she she says it directly, and her friend that she's known since high school or what, maybe in long middle than school, that, elementary school, something it's like, like that. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me make it up to you and everything. She's like, no. Okay. She goes, you know what? I left LA because I realized that I wasn't like my friends. I wasn't like Brandon. I wasn't like any of my so called friends there. I thought I could come back and find something here, but I'm not like any of you either. Basically, she says I'm not like anybody else. She feels alone and separated from everyone. Mm -hmm. And she's like, so I might as well do that in L.A. where it's not fucking snowing all the time. (laughs) Right. And then she leaves. I think the airport and she comes back home. I think that her idea that she is a unique little snowflake is kind of dumb, though. Yeah, I, I mean, I think she's a lot like her friends in L.A. Yeah, and she was probably a, li- a lot like her friends in Minnesota before. Yeah, when she lived there. Because mm-hmm. people are a lot like the people they're around. Right? It turns out. So, Peer pressure is a thing. So she's going to be behind a semester now. I mean, and think about all the money and time she wasted. She like, also couldn't get an, uh, into one of the acting classes that she wanted to get into. Oh, yeah, that's true. So, I don't know. You know, know. fuck it all, because you can't get into one acting class. Right. She's going to get into an acting class now, though. Yep, we know that. So, the last storyline. Brandon and Steve. Yeah, there you go. I didn't didn't know if you knew it or not. And the girls. Um, The girls. So. Carrie Grant's daughter's back. 
Yeah, and she says "jute de jute No, she does not. That's what her dad said. But Brandon and Steve are weird this episode, and I don't like it. Well, I think they're weird because of the storyline with the the girl from New York. Mrs. Okay, Mrs. These are real bagels, <laughs> and they're always kind of competitive with each other. But I think they take. I think the the episode takes it to the next level in order to provoke this reaction from her. Yeah, because it's too much testosterone. So yeah, they're they're like playing tennis. Yeah, because they're in super competitive mode. And no matter how much tennis they play, <laughs> super competitive mode. <laughs> but no matter how much tennis they play, they just want to keep playing and playing. And the girls are tired, and they don't want to. And they're yeah. making them play doubles, which is dumb. Yeah. And then they're like trash talking each other, which is dumb. And the Steve- girls are just standing there in the sun, being bored. Yeah. Steve beats Steve beats uh, Brandon, and then. Brandon wants a rematch, and, and, and then Brandon beats Steve, and Steve's like, let's go again, and they just, just keep doing that. And then in the second game, Br- or Steve is deliberately hitting the ball at that girl from New York. Mm. Not he's Celeste. mad at her. Well, also, but also he's trying to win. Yeah. Like, it's a cheap way to try to win, but he's trying to win. So, yeah, there's a lot going on there, and she is just done with it. She storms off, she says... You're just as bad as him, Brandon, you piece of shit. And she starts packing her stuff. There's a lot of packing and storming that's happening in this yeah, episode. That's right. Um, this episode should have been called Packing and Storming. <laughs> right. But um, he apologizes and, you know, gets her to stay. He does. But there's a lot of pressure because he has not slept with her yet. And Steve had said, you've been, you know, hanging out with her more than a week and you haven't fucked her yet? And and there's only one day left at this point. All right. So you got to no, three days. It well, was there three was days. three days of initially. Yeah. But when they have the fight, it's the last day. Even in his own subtle way, Dylan's like, you haven't been inside that yet? Dylan? Yeah. When he came to visit them. Oh. They had, they had a small oh, conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of pressure on Brandon to try to sleep with her. And she's like, yeah, I don't know about this. They'll kiss for a little bit, and then she breaks away. Yeah, It's very clear she's been hurt in some way. So, eventually, she admits that she was raped. Yeah, in New York. She went, she was in Tribeca, I guess, seeing the film festival. I don't know. And then she's, like, trying to get a cab, and it's late at night, and she's by herself, and some guy just comes up and, uh... You know, helps himself. Yeah, he's got a knife, and he's like, "This is what you're gonna do." She's like, "I had to do what he, you know, what he said or whatever," which is correct. Yeah, when you're being raped, that's that is what you have to do. So, no, I'm just saying, like, some a lot of times women will take the attitude of, "I should have done this" or "I should have done that," and it's like, no, you you get out of there with your life. Yeah, you do what you need. You know, like you don't do anything. You just, you know. You follow their orders, I guess, or whatever. I mean, there's there's stuff you can do. <laughs> this is I'm not giving like... him a look right now because what the fuck are you saying? No, I'm not trying to be like, look, all rapists must be obeyed. That's not. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. Oh my goodness! I'm saying that there's stuff you can do to try to protect yourself, but ultimately. The at-fault party is the rapist. Yes. It's good that she's not blaming herself. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Although she started out saying, you know, uh, some people would say, and she did say some people, not not that she was owning it, but some people would say I shouldn't have been by myself or whatever. Right. But, you know, that's so not fair that women aren't allowed to go out by themselves at night and, like, then if we do, it's our fault, like, whatever. Yeah. Maybe uh, the rapist shouldn't be out by himself. <laughs> Obviously, that? he shouldn't. Maybe um, the rapist should have a sign that says, I'm a rapist on his neck. You know, that's, yeah, that's, I, I don't like that stuff. I don't like the, I don't like people saying it to women. I don't like women thinking it and stuff like that. Obviously, you know, rapists are the scum of the earth. And, um, you know, I just, I don't like when people blame women for that stuff. Yeah, It's disgusting. But Brandon is very sweet and understanding and listens because, you know, he is a good guy despite acting like a testosterone jerk earlier. Right. And, um, you know, she's comfortable enough with him that she says, you know, can we sleep together without having sex? Like, actually sleep together. She wants to, 
have him hold her. Basically. Which, which I think is healthy. Like, I think that's, you know, a good yeah. first step. I mean, you know, she's leaving. So unfortunately, we're never going to see her again because right. that's what happens with Brandon's girls. Right. But <laughs> Brandon's girls. <laughs> she's just going to get thrown on the pile. Yep. Out in the desert. Just another one of Brandon's girls. <laughs> But no, I mean, I liked I liked how they left things. With I want them. an episode of Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> just following all of Brandon's girls. <laughs> oh my god, that would be awesome! <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. The sleeping the other thing it, re- it reminded me of one of my favorite lines from that movie Mall Rats that we saw earlier this hmm. year, where the one guy Jason Lee's character Brody says, "Have you ever slept with somebody?" Yeah. <laughs> That girl goes, Joey Lauren Adams, she goes, she goes, yeah. And he goes, no, I mean, slept next to him, not fuck them on a gaming table. <laughs> wow. But, uh, yeah, when she was like, do you want to sleep? Can we sleep together? And he's like, are you sure you want to? And she was like, no, I mean, sleep. Right. <laughs> yeah, there is a big difference. And, yeah, and absolutely. Especially, you know, if you're not having sex already, I think there's intimacy to just sleeping together for sure that isn't necessarily their leader but really you think so you think the intimacy of sleeping next to somebody goes away um i mean i think that it's like it's almost like i don't know um an understanding because there's the sexual tension right yeah i would say that the i would say that the intimacy stays but the anticipation goes away if you're not sleeping with somebody, that that sexual anticipation, that like electricity in the air, is there when you're laying next to somebody? Because mm-hmm. it's like, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? There's all these different things, right? When you when you're already sleeping with somebody, I I think that kind of goes away. But I, I would say the intimacy remains. Yeah, I guess. If we ever move in together, maybe we'll find out. <laughs> maybe. I don't think there's anything I'm forgetting, but I, I mean, I feel like you definitely will tell me. No, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's that's pretty much where we end the episode. Brenda's coming home. Dylan and Kelly are back together. Brandon has blue balls. <laughs> right. That's pretty much where we, where we end. All right. So um, if you have something to say about it, mm-hmm. uh, write us, latev1994 at AOL.com. Do that. We'd love to hear from you. Check out our website, www.retrolatefee.com. Mm-hmm. We'd love to see you there. And tell your friends. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.